We are going to be celebrating our mothers. The entire service is dedicated to our mothers. And uh, not just our mothers, but for the women who are here, uh, what makes a woman a mother is the womb. And if you are carrying a womb in this place, it is your day and we celebrate you. Hallelujah. I have a message for for all of us. I have a message specially for the women. And the Lord is going to be done for them. Amen. All right. In the spirit of celebration, in the spirit of um, additions and milestones, we want to, if it's your anniversary or it is your if there's a milestone in your life or there's a milestone in your life like maybe your company is 18 years or maybe your yeah. <laughs> if it's your anniversary or something we want to acknowledge such and, and celebrate grace upon, upon it and uh, we want to we want to thank God for for <laughs> Amen. Fantastic. It's a powerful couple. Yeah, Ninda. I drain and quana been your body need ye. There's a mother of eleven or something. I don't know, you know what's an say happy anniversary to you. Yeah, I think that uh invariably now, okay, I look around, uh, people have been married, all the married people in the house, raise your hand. You are married, 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 you are married. Okay, all right. You are married for 10 years, raise your hand. You are married for 10 years, raise your hand. Okay, all right. All right, all right. There are some senior men in the house. <laughs> Mr. Jew and Mavis have been around for 10 years. Uncle Joe, how many years? How many years? Ten. They married a week before you. So, so it was your anniversary last week, or this week, or the coming week. Okay, wow, 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 wow. Ten, ten. And I think Shelly is 11, eh? Shelly. Shelly and uh, Joe is 11, wow. A senior... People <laughs> we are married to the Lord for 2,000 years. Amen. But I say we thank God for your lives. Uh, this, this, this couple do not need too much words. You understand? Your life and your conduct and your faith and how you live can speak so much that we don't need words. And on this special day, we always look for opportunity to let you know what you mean to us. And this is one of them. And we want to tell you that you are wonderful. We learn closely and afar a whole lot from you. We learn too. We learn faith. We learn humility. We learn generosity. We learn everything from you people. And we say thank you so much for being part of us, for staying in this church and believing in this young ministry and sticking and staying. And we thank God for 10 years. We will be here to celebrate 20 years. And we will be here to celebrate 30 years. And many more blissful years ahead of us. God bless you so much. Even 60. More what? Well, you know who is saying that. When you finish, you can deal with them. <laughs> this union is blessed in Jesus' name. The bliss and the glory and the honor of the Lord is upon this union. There is peace and understanding in this union. There is a lot to learn in this union. We thank God for this milestone. And we pray grace upon it for many to emulate and for many to see many years from now and learn and see examples in it. We thank God that you are adding onto this union anything that is deserving of the sacrifices that they have made. We give you praise and we give you glory. And we celebrate this beautiful thing we see. And we want more of such in this assembly, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Happy anniversary. One more. One. Look at the one more thing. How many of you want one more? 
you are alone. You see that you are alone. Hey, defense minister's hands is up. Wow, one more. One more what? <laughs> the people in the, 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 the children in this house, eh? you'll be taming them very soon. Amen. Maybe the spirit will talk to them. Maybe the anniversary. You want some pension something there? Eh? Uh, you have pension house, pension business. Pension, your friend is saying. Yeah, but I said, Professor is there. What do you want again? <laughs> All right. It's Mother's Day, and I want to, I want to talk to the woman. The men here, listen, because it's actually your message. But I'm going to say it to the woman. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 1, I read first 27 to 28. My God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of this world to confound the mighty. And the base things of the world the Lord has, which are despised, had the Lord chosen. And, this, and the things that are not, to bring to naught the things that are. Hallelujah. The title of my sermon this morning is Hope for the Gentiles. Hope for the Gentiles. Since last week, this is about the sixth title I've given to the sermon. One of them I changed was God the Impossibility Specialist. I've given it the title The God of Bad Girls. The God of Weak Women. And I don't know what, maybe I'll give you the options when you are done, you want to add one to it, but official one is hope for the Gentiles. Hallelujah. You like the God of bad girls one. <laughs> Amen. Women are special. How many of you know that? Women are unique. I always say this on Mother's Day, that if women are not part of the world again, I'll go with them wherever they are going. I don't be part of a world with no woman. Hallelujah. I always tell you that their form and shape is truth. Ours is a lie. Life is not a straight line. Life is full of caves. And life is full of mountains and valleys. Men deceive us with how they look. Women are the truth, the word of God. That life has bumps and valleys. And life can be sweet and sour. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. I don't know how I'm starting my message, but Dr. Michelle is here. And uh, she, women, today we are celebrating the people that when they say, don't talk to me, and they block you, and they say, don't text me again, the next thing they're expecting you to call them. Is it true? When they do that, and the men who don't know who have been lent, they will say, that, okay, they say, I should, they say that you didn't call me then they will also block. They realize that. You don't understand. Women Women are wonderful, sir. Women, they are wonderful. Eh? They are amazing people. Hey, they are like God. When you think you understand them, then they will show you another one. But we love them this morning to our mothers and our aunties and our, our uh, grandmothers and all the women, the women figures in our lives who are mothers and potential mothers, it's your day and we thank God for your lives. The color and beauty and understanding you bring to our lives can never be uh, uh, overlooked. When the men were standing here, there was a mother telling them that they should do this. She do this. She do this. When it's our birthday, they drag us to come here. We don't know where we put our socks. We don't know how to eat. How to lose it, I don't know. How to lose it, I don't know. A man, we are here. Nanka, we are here. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. I've been in the boys' dormitory before. And I've been in the house. And I've been in a married, in a married home. And I know that I like, I know what I like. Hallelujah. How many were in boarding house? And the only men in the room. We were 50 in the room. 
in your bathhouse. We don't, how many of you like it? I know you don't like it. If the women were not part of you, that's how our lives would look like. So when, when God did over time, God realized that, mm, I have never made a mistake before and I'll never make a mistake. I'm about to make a mistake. Let me correct it. And he said, I'll do over time. When he had finished, he said, the one I'm come to create, I have to take my time. Create everybody in one class, the woman in another class. The day they were created, form them or turn them book. No, yeah, valleys and rooms. Everything is there. The thing is good. When Adam woke up, he had become mumu. He has lost everything. He said, wow, 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 wow. Like a fire truck. Amen. Let me start preaching. Now, we live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world. And when sin entered the world, the world has never been the same again. It has caused so much trouble for humanity. But women seem to be affected or have been affected more than any other thing that God, God created. And uh, we live in a male-dominated world where women almost have to struggle to be understood and to find their place. In almost every profession, male or men have dominated everywhere. And uh, ministries, government, and agencies have to be formed to speak for women and to advocate for for children and women, and the fallen world did not, did not, did not, did not do women any good. You know what I'm talking about. So many women have been abused. Of course, men are abused too. But I know I'm speaking in respect to majority. Hallelujah. Many women have found themselves in very uncomfortable places and situations, abuse, and. Uh, disadvantage in many ways just because they are women. Hallelujah. Just because they are women. And so, like I said, people have to form groups and even government have to form ministries to advocate and to speak for them. Men don't need that. Because of that, a lot had gone against women and men do not understand them. I believe that what we are celebrating today about women or mothers is strength. The world's definition of strength is somebody who is able to lift a lot of weight. And so we are deceived to think that we are strong. But that is not strength. Hallelujah. Otherwise, when we say God is mighty, almighty, what has he carried before? He hasn't been to the gym. He hasn't participated in the world uh, strongest. But God is mighty. What is he carrying? When we say strength, and ability, women, men must admit that it is not just being able to carry things, but it's more than that. Strength is one of the definitions of strength is ability to endure pain. The ability to endure pain. And women are able to endure so much pain, carry so, 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 so much pain. And we think that because they cannot carry a bucket of water, because you have done things to them for them to do CS, you are stronger than them. But women are strong, and they are stronger than the weakest. You know, when God says that the God is not weak and God is not foolish, but in First Corinthians he said that the foolishness of God is, is, is wiser than men or the wisdom of men, and the weakness of God is stronger. The weakest woman is stronger than the strongest man. The men don't agree with me still, but the Lord will give you understanding one day. Amen. How many men agree with me? Yeah. It's okay. You know, I also didn't agree some years ago about when I became a man, I understood some of these things. Hallelujah. The Old Testament has ended. We flipped our Bibles and we saw New Testament. In the New Testament, we are faced or presented with the first 16 verses in the Bible. Over there, we see the genealogy of Jesus. In the genealogy of Jesus, 
something interesting lies in there that I want to bring your attention to. Genealogies are very important. One of the reasons why some of us do not like some of the Old Testament books is because of the begat, 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 begat. And you can't mention the names. And you don't understand begat. And so you don't like the books. You flip, you go after the begat, and then you can get some understanding. But in Matthew chapter 1, from verse 1 to 16, a whole bunch of people are listed over them. And before the birth of Jesus was announced from the verse number 17 downwards, the first 16 verses has some big lessons that I want to address in the light of women or mothers this morning. In that genealogy, it is full of men. However, only four women found their names in this genealogy of Jesus. And all these four women had questionable characters. And they were not the women that we expect to be there. So, in the genealogy of Jesus, only four women are there. The first one is Tama. The second one is Ruth. The next one is Bathsheba. The other one is Rahab. And they are not the people that you want to be associated with the genealogy of Jesus. But they are in there. And this morning, I want to run a little commentary about their lives, how they lived, and how and why they found themselves in close association as Yesu. As Omu Omasi Foni Yesu. Omu Nomiye Yesu. Ne, ne, ne great grand, great, 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 great grandparents. Do you know them? How many of us know Tama? Tama. Not many of us know Tama. I want to start with Tama. Verse 3. Judah begat Perez and Zerah by Tama. And the story goes on before Jesus came. And Tama's name is in the genealogy of Jesus. There's a problem here. Tama. Israel or Jacob had 12 children. The, the, the fourth is called Judah. Judah, Judah had been able to give to, a birth to children and his children had married and one of them had married a woman called Tamar. Now Tamar, Tamar's husband is dead and then tradition required that the husband's brother, Onan, would, would, would as it were, marry her, and then uh, make babies for the brother. Onan misbehaved. And then uh, uh, he was killed. And then Judah, the father, the fourth born of Israel, Jacob, realized that this Tama, she's a Balok woman. My first son married her. My first son married her. He's dead. The second son, Onan, married her. He's dead. Tradition required that the third son will marry. I said, no. How many? Three times? No, I won't, I, won't, I won't allow. So, he decided that he would not let the third son marry Tama. You know the story. If you have forgotten, you are doing revision. And then, what happened? Tama said, Obwa. I can't go childless. This woman is full of deceit. She used deceit or deception and prostitution. He went in and disguised herself as a prostitute and slept with her father-in-law. And they gave birth to a child. This is the woman that has found herself in the genealogy of Jesus. So after they gave birth, then they came to give birth. So Judah said, okay, if you have done the thing there, then now we have to continue. So, Tama is not a too nice a character in the Bible. They don't come across people called Tama. Because the other Tama put their name, Absalom, Adonita, David. Not Tama is bad, but this Tama too. So, the name Tama is not good. 
How can you do that? But this woman is found herself in the genealogy of Jesus. Judah and Tama. And Tama is mentioned. And then through the lineage of Tama, so they gave birth after that son, they gave birth to Perez and Zerah. And Perez begat Hezron, and Hezron begat Ram, and it continues until Jesus was born. And when the genealogy of Jesus was being mentioned, Thomas' name was included. The story is found in Genesis chapter 38. The entire chapter talks about this. You can go and read it. The story of, of, of Tama and her inclusion into the genealogy of Jesus tells us that it is not always by our, our deeds and, and God can use, pick the most flawed of women and men and include them into his plan and use them for his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tama was not a good character, but Jesus was not ashamed to associate himself with Tama. Hallelujah. So that was deception over there. We get to the verse 5 and we see another woman who is a Gentile and who was a prostitute in the city of Jericho. Her name was Rahab. Salmon begat Boaz by Rahab. You know Boaz? You know Boaz? You know Boaz? Boaz is not so far from David. But, but the woman who gave birth to Boaz was a former prostitute that God picked and used. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We also know the story. So Israel is about to attack Jericho. And they send spies. And uh, Rahab received the spies. And Rahab risked her life, risked everything that she had, and kept the spies in there. When the king saw that they had gone into Rahab's room, of course, because she's a prostitute, they thought that Abraham Koyomuyi, hallelujah. They went in there and Rahab hid them in her roof and lied to them, risking her life. And the people left. The Bible said that they covenanted. They reached an agreement. Rahab is used to bargaining. She had formerly in her life bargained over the price of pleasure that she gave to men. So now, she put faith in the God of Israel, risked her life, rejected her own people and the gods of her people, put faith in the God of Israel, and covenanted with them that when they come to destroy the city of Jericho, she and her family will be saved. Deal. Deal or no deal. Deal. They signed and they told her, him that, and they agreed. And then they left. And we all know the story. From there, Jericho was, was overtaken by the Israelites. And of course, Rahab and her family were saved and she was received into the Israel community stopped her prostitution and then now found herself a husband and then gave birth to a man through whom David was born and continued unto Solomon and we had Jesus. Hallelujah. She became the mother of Boaz. We all know that it is written over there. And although she was a prostitute, our Lord Jesus associated with her. With all the shame and with all the weaknesses that comes with her former trade as a prostitute. Now, the woman called Rahab was a prostitute and she, she went in just looking for safety for herself that she would not be destroyed. But the faith that she had in the God of Israel did not just bring her deliverance and safety, but it brought her salvation. And later in the Bible, it is written of how she acted by faith. Amen. Amen. Good. You see the character that are in there. Another one is Ruth. Another one is Ruth. Ruth was a Moabite. 
You know the story of Ruth and Moabite. And who, is, who was Moab? Moab was the son of Lot. So I'm doing Old Testament stories. Eh? The, the Moabites were cursed. They were cursed people. They are people that had nothing to do with the people of Israel. God's chosen people because there was a curse upon their lives. Hallelujah. Now, this Moabite called Ruth has one of the books of the Bible named after her. I don't understand. What is the story of Ruth? Naomi had gone to dwell in, 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 in a city. Naomi had children and the children married. <laughs> the children married and uh, so Ruth, please listen to me. You know the story. Opa and Ruth were daughter-in-laws to Naomi. Naomi had lost her husband. And these two daughter, daughters-in-law, Naomi is leaving the city. And they wanted to follow Naomi. And Naomi restricted them from following her. And so we know the story where Ruth said that, I will not go. They were harassing Naomi and Naomi said that, in root chapter 1, from the verse number 13 coming down, Okasa happen now, Pase, I no cry, na me didn't cause her same, Naomi Mandrion. She kissed Naomi. And she left. Then it was left with Ruth. Then Naomi turned to Ruth and told Naomi that. And told Ruth that. Ruth, follow your sister. You people are Moabite. In the verse 15. In the verse 15, I'll show you something here. She said to her, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. To her people and to her gods. Watch here. She had left me. And she has gone to her people and her gods. You also go to your people. And go to your gods. Follow your sister-in-law. Over here. Ruth. A woman of faith. Made some statement that had become. Part of wedding vows. She went there and said. Oye me de minko. I'm stuck with you. He said. She had gone back to her people and to her gods. But for me, Ruth said, entreat me not to leave or turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. Went on and said that where you die, I will die. Later, this Ruth became the mother-in-law of Rahab because she married Boaz. And when Boaz redeemed Ruth and made Ruth her wife, he realized that both of them had some similarities. Some similarities. What are the similarities between Rahab and Ruth? One, they were all Gentiles. They were not Israelite. They were Gentiles. And both of them forsook their people. Both of them rejected their people. Rahab rejected his own people. And she put faith in another God. He, she put faith in the God of Israel. And she said she betrayed the whole city. And made a covenant with God's people. She had heard about that God. How he had parted the Red Sea and all the miracles he has done. Say, your God is about to destroy the city. I believe in that God. You can come and kill my people. Take them. So, over here, they are all Gentiles. They all forsook their people. And they are gods. So, what Ruth did over here was not just following Naomi, but those words that Naomi 
said that she has gone back to her people and her gods. She put faith in the God of Naomi, who was an Israelite, hallelujah, and forsook her people who were Moabites, who were cursed people and Gentiles, hallelujah. Boaz learned that they all had faith in God, intense loyalty to God, and they forsook their people. And all of them also had yet another similarity. They all kept people. We see over there that Rahab took care of the spies. He made them come, he kept them in her room for three days, made them comfortable, hid them, and lowered them through the wall of the city, and then they escaped, keeping people that were strangers, but were God's people. Over here in this story also, we saw that Ruth also was a brother keeper. He also, he also kept Naomi, who was an old woman who had been widowed, lost her son, her two sons, lost her husband, had become widowed, and he saw that this woman needs help. I connect to her and it was Ruth who nursed and took care of Naomi as a daughter. Do you see the similarity between Rehab and these people? What you see over there, that is not clearly written in the Old, Test the Old Testament, is faith, flawed, with weaknesses, widowed, pained, and Gentiles. But yet, by their actions, they were living a life of faith in the God of Israel by neglecting the things that are behind them, the gods that are not gods and their own people that were not serving the God of Israel. Hallelujah. Later, Boaz went on and read Ruth chapter 1 from verse 13 to 17. Let's read over there. 13 to 17. You can write it and go and read it later. No, chapter 4. Sorry. Chapter 4. Not chapter 1. Chapter 4. So Boaz took Ruth and she became her wife. And then he went into her. The Lord gave her conception and she bore a son. Let's go on. Then the, the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a close relative. And may his name be what? Famous in Israel. 15. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons has born has born what? Him. 16. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to him. Verse 17. Also the neighbor, the neighbor woman gave him the name saying there is a there is a son to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Hallelujah. So you see over here that Ruth was just a nobody, a Moabite woman who demonstrated faith in the God of Israel. And now, now look what has happened to her. She had become a great grandmother to David. Hallelujah. Now, these are not popular people in the Bible, but there is yet another woman, Bathsheba. Bathsheba. So from Rahab to Ruth, from Ruth to Bathsheba, Tama, these are not good names. Verse 6. You know, Bathsheba, the end of Bathsheba, Nidimpo Yambo. She was only described. 
by her circumstances. The faith of many women. Sometimes women go through things and what they have gone through becomes their, their identity. This woman saw pain. We know this story also. David, yeah. Ophi, Ophi Rehab, so. Re, Rehab, ah, no, or ye, two, two, nin. Nenana kanswa, David, a man after God's own heart. But he had a problem. He was a wicked man. He was a murderer. He was a liar. He was an adulterous man. But God loved him. Yes, you boost your phone. Don't be shy of your your back. Your wechi. Yes, wechi nyen se wodien. Wechi no. A yes in yes wechi. You know, the witches in your family they, and the mistakes of your family and your genealogy, it can't be compared to that. Though. My family is better than Jesus' family. And uh, if your family is worse than this, then you should have died for the world. Hallelujah. No, I don't have an uncle that has killed. I don't have an uncle eh, that has, you know, this, you know, should I tell David's story? You know, you know, you know David. Uncle Kwan Wanko on an rooftop was the genia we see poo on a dinosaur and our man folk and our shano who say there's a beautiful man baffin. Wicked man. He can write psalms, but he can also kill. Oh, who man anna or tafrina no. I know see from no say. If any say, corner coffre. Today I'm pre the names of all the names apart from Tama, they are all in church. Obed is here, Naomi is here, David is here, Jesse is here. Yeah. So you know the story of 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 Bathsheba. Over here, look, look, look at look at the way. Go back to Matthew. Look at the way she was described. The Bible say, as the Bible say, the verse six. And Jesse begat David the king. King David, king, David the king begat Solomon by Bathsheba. No. By her who had been the wife of Uriah. And Asheho said, Nina Nakanswan, or you would be with Uriah, Okuno. Lady you funu and no say ah I have to finish what I've started. I'll find an omega. Let me finish the husband. Go and bring the husband. No, then you to work on him. And you kunu, you kunu we no, or the katane boniso, and no fan no warrior no. And on any woo ye. You know the story. And I'm going to smoke you for Nate and call Koyi Nathan. Blah, blah, blah. Akranu wuye. Akranu wuye. Listen. Bathsheba went through so much pain. She went through so much pain. Ni kum ewu. Look at Bathsheba. Ni kum ewu. Ena wabe wawi on hen. Ena oni on hen. Oni on hen na wu. Abufrana. Intia. On hen nu kum nu kum nu. Yeah, we are now seven days in a space of just a year. See what has happened to one woman. Lost a child and lost a husband. Stuck with a king with so much shame. With so much shame and reproach. Can you imagine losing a husband and a child within the space of a short time? Bathsheba saw a lot of pain. But later, the Lord blessed Bathsheba with Solomon. Open but yes, was it for no? Yes, was it for no? Oh, for be per ma, but all men only conquer by 300. On my way, 700. Yes, which you for no. Hallelujah. Miss, yes, which you for no. Listen, you are afraid of your, you are shy of your hometown, you can't mention it. But the man is from Nazareth. Nazareth is, is <laughs> yes, we are. Now, I mean, amen. I want to be fast and start preaching. To 
two, two. So you think I'm preaching? <laughs> so, so, what is happening is that the woman has gone through so much pain. Banyamia faneso ama Yesu yawu Yesu na se fo ne na ne 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 ba Solomon enso e ware ye and e didi so a and e ko wu Yesu and then her name has appeared in the genealogy of Jesus I think that over here we have to learn a lesson of not calling women like the way the Bible called uh, uh, Bathsheba. Owo di by enfeni di ayo obi kunu ayo obi yere and I said why is it? Rahab she did a lot of good things. Many of us had forgotten or didn't know that Rahab's husband Rahab onu no wo uboas or wari Salmon onu no wo uboas or a yes, no, no, but and they go so rare about it. The other neighbor, that's not good. So, we should try not to tag women and our mothers with their flaws and their mistakes to always remind them about their dead husband. Hallelujah! Now, the thing about all this story is what I want to tell you this morning. It's all about the stories, the stories you know them, but the lessons in the story, the shock. In this genealogy, beloved, is the absence of Sarah. Sarah knew her. Rebecca knew her. Rachel knew her. These are the wives, the proud wives of the patriarch of Israel. They are not there. Not one. Not one. Not one. Woman. Broken woman. Tired woman. Woman with limitations. Women with questions, mothers with pain, mothers with questions more than answers, mothers that are going through a lot, women, Christian women, that are looking at women who are not Christians and seeing progress and seeing so much going on with them and for them. And you look at yourself and you do, your story has some similarities in Ghana with these people who lived in the Old Testament. There are four. But they were, they were plugged in and crafted in into this genealogy to teach us a message. And the message is my message this morning. Hope for the Gentiles. Hope for the women. This, this, this deserving people, Sarah. God has brown Sarah. Rebecca. Do you know Sarah and Rebecca? Now the Rebecca and Rahab to Wawana Befa. Eh? Anna, Sarah, and Bathsheba. Compare them. Leah. Muni na in New These are the wives. The, the association of the wives of the patriarchs of Israel. He passed them all. And these last days, women, I brought to you a message. And the men who love them must see them. In these last days, one of the things I know that God is using, is doing, is that he's building local churches. There's another thing I know he's doing in the local churches and outside the local churches, is that God is raising women. And God is using women. And God is using broken women, broken mothers, single mothers. And God has a place and an agenda for men, for women, who are like these four women. And he is not ashamed to associate with them. Hallelujah. What does the story teach us? The strong has been neglected. Go back to our anchor text that I read from 1 Kings, 1 Corinthians. The things that are, the things that are mighty, those that are qualified, and some men who feel entitled, I'm the father of the house, I'm the head of the family, about and all these useless proverbs that have brought ego and pride in the heart of men and they cannot be used of God. The women must wake up and take their place. Beloved, look here. 
For God has chosen Sarah there. Now me fan know you should never say Sarah na na Abraham chain of faith no matter. I bet you could. Or be kwa kofa rehab. Beloved, in this in this in this genealogy is loaded with lessons that if you think that you are doing somebody a favor, you think that God like God is a unu honuma as running kosu unu honuma like you are so important. Like God needs you, the church needs you, your mother needs you. Without you, now people who think that. Like, I have booked my place there without me, and they cannot move the car. I'm holding the key. No, Sarah was not holding the key. The key was with an unassuming person, Rahab. We have seen Rahab had faith. The faith that Rahab, you see, the thing about this woman that makes them dangerous is the faith that they had. You see, they didn't live in the community of Israel to see the wonders and explain the wonders of God. Sarah was the woman of faith? The faith that Rahab operated in. She put her life on the line. When they entered the room, and she said the, the, the spies were not there, and they said, okay, we'll search the room. You can imagine what happened to her and the spies. You be cool, Muni, na. That's Sarah, that you're a man, and you're a hager, man. Some of the people that look like they qualify, they don't qualify. They are not with faith like that. Hallelujah. So sometimes, God, the God of the bad girls, the weak women and the neglected wives and mothers, God has a place for us. He used Rahab, Tama, prostitute. Rahab, prostitute, bad girls. What? So, the qualified like men who don't need help qualified like men who don't need anybody to help them. There's no ministry for men and boys affairs. We, we can take care of our own. Like Sarah and her class of people. The strong and the mighty. In 1 Corinthians the Bible said that the things that are the things that are mighty. The things that people that think that they are wise. God bypassed them and went to the weak. Hallelujah. Five things that this story teach us. Number one, that there is hope for the Gentiles. And in these last days, beloved, there is hope for those who are lost and those who are not part of the commonwealth of Israel. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 10. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. Uh, verse 10. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to the people for the Gentiles shall seek him and his resting place shall be glorious. The Gentiles shall seek him. All these people were Gentiles who did not qualify. Isaiah wrote and Paul rightly quoted this in Romans Chapter 15, verse 12, where the title of this sermon lies. And again, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. In him the Gentiles will have hope. Jesus Christ is the hope of the Gentiles. Jesus Christ. Is faith. Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of faith that which this woman displayed that made them qualify. It is true that without faith it is impossible to please God. It is not without works. Faith will produce works. But we must start at the place of faith and this woman, Gentiles, but displayed such faith that was not even found amongst the Jews. And so God sees faith. And if any Gentile today can put faith in God, if any woman, if any mother here who has questions, if any mother here who is broken or a potential mother who is going through anything, representing the woman we are talking about over here. So if I say Gentile, the hope for the Gentiles over here, it is not just the Gentiles, because the Gentiles include men and women, but here, this woman, 
are our representatives in the genealogy of Jesus. That the Israel, Jesus was never for the Israelites alone. Yensu Yasifu was his hobby. What? Yensu Yasifu Elwo Nebusu Yemu. So, you know the people, they felt that Jesus was for them. Jesus was for them. You know, he came to them. He came to his own. But his own did not receive them. So, Jesus belonged to them. But Jesus, Jesus didn't belong to them wholly like that. They were Gentiles in there representing our interests. They were holding our shares for us. That one day, that one day, God will call an Israelite who is called Paul and he will be the apostle sent to the Gentiles for the Gentiles to get a place in Jesus. Beloved, in this, in this genealogy, the women that were put over there, the men were more than 30. The women are only four. My beloved, the faith that they demonstrated cannot be compared to the faith of all these men. And here, if you're a woman and things, you have questions and you don't have answers. The answers to these questions is in Christ. If you can turn to Jesus and you can pray to Jesus and you can see what he has said about you in his word, there is hope for you. Hallelujah. There is hope for you. And there is a future for you. Jesus Christ shall be the hope of the Gentiles. And Isaiah said, the Gentiles shall seek him because we are partakers of his lineage and his genealogy. Hallelujah. Our mothers who were in the genealogy of Jesus were not nice and beautiful people just like us. But if God accepted them, we know that God will accept us today. If God used them, God will use us today. How did they find their way into the genealogy of Jesus? Not by works, but by faith. Just by faith. Not by what they did. If it was by what they did, they didn't qualify. So therein lies the subject of the Bible. That it will be justification by faith and faith alone. And not by what we have done. If God looked at Rahab and all the, women, the men she has slept with, she won't qualify. Look at all of them flawed. But God used them. Hallelujah. There's hope for women. Another thing that we see in this story is that God is greater than our sins. He's greater than our abuses, our mistakes, and what men do to us. God is greater than our circumstances. You can write all this down. He's greater than your sins. He's greater than the abuses that you have suffered. He's greater than the delay. He's greater than your mistakes. He's greater than people's opinions about you. They have labeled you a witch. They have labeled you barren. They have labeled you because of a mistake you did when you were in SS or when you were growing up. Because of something. The woman who lost the husband. The woman who lost the child. When people want to describe it, they say, The pain that you have gone through as a woman. And sometimes they will use your child, your child that failed. You know, when you have two or three children and one is successful and one is a failure, and they are the one to describe you to strangers. This world is, is cruel. People are not fair to women. Hallelujah. But God is bigger than these things. Women. You ha women have secret pains. Secret insecurities. You see they have what? Secret insecurities that their, their husbands do not even know about. From their body to their speech and their background and their past. Women and mothers, today, as we celebrate you, God has covered all of these things with his love and his power. In Romans chapter 5, verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Grace abounds. Grace abounds. Not for us to sin. 
God hates sin. Our sins are punished on him. If you sin, you are giving Satan access to your life. Don't sin. If you sin, there's an advocate with Jesus. But brother, we say, when sin abounds, when abuse abounds, when questions abound, answers abound much more. Beloved, when sin abounds, God, because the, the, the story is the story of grace. The story of we the Gentiles is that the story of women and mothers. And this woman we have spoken about this morning is just by grace. How did they find their way into the genealogy of Jesus? And they didn't even know that we'll be preaching about them today. They died and they were buried many years ago. But when the New Testament writers came on scene, inspired by the whole, you see, this is one of the things that make me know that the Bible is an inspired word of God. If there's men who wrote the Bible, the Bible is the word of God, I tell you. David knew nothing but like he would write about his episodes with Bathsheba. The Bible is the word of God, though. Sankanipa and Etro genealogy of Jesus. Huh? You think he will put Bathsheba there? Rahab. Tama. What? Me, the reasons I believe the Bible is the word of God are strange, strange reasons. These are some of the reasons why I know. That is how when you are when you are writing the story of this church and writing the story of your family. The most unlikely people. Listen, God, that is why I wanted to call the sermon the God of impossibility specialists. When it is not possible, then God will come inside. Hallelujah. They find their way there by grace. Grace just abandoned towards them because their sins were many and grace washed, covered their sins because of their faith in what Jesus will come and do. Hallelujah. Beloved, it was to tell us that also when Jesus comes back, he will associate with sinners. In Luke chapter 1, in Luke, Luke chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, you cannot be the savior of sinners and you will not have sinners in your genealogy. You cannot be, you are not going to come and come and say you are saving sinners. How will we know that you are able to pick a useless person like Rahab. How do we know? You see, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible said, in as much as the children have become partakers of flesh and blood, he himself became a partaker of same. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, he became sin to make us righteous. He didn't stand far away and send angels to come and die for us. He became like us. He became a man. Suffered sin. Resisted temptation. So that he can be our high priest who can be tempted with the feeling of our infirmities. These are the women that give us hope that Jesus is ours. It's not just a song. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine because there's a woman in her genealogy that looks like my mother. That looks like my wife. That even looks like myself. Thrilled. And nothing about us to desire. Widows and liars and prostitutes. And he was not ashamed to associate with them. Look here. <laughs> the Pharisees, they are amazing people. Look at the verse 1. Do, do you, you see something? You see something? Hey, Self-righteousness eh, is more deadly than... Eh, then all the task collectors. You see, the task collectors and the sinners drew near to hear him. Now, next verse. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, this man receives and eat with sinners. He receives and eat with them. They, they are not sinners. They are the, they are the strong and mighty. They are the wise. No, they are Sarah. Yes, you are there. They are the Jews. Jesus is eating with sinners. He came to seek and save the lost. He came for the hopeless. He came for the women that the men are abusing. He came for the women and the, and the, and the mothers that the husbands don't understand. The Pharisees are not sinners and they are complaining that somebody is eating with sinners. And were the chief sinners. We saw that they are the chief sinners. 
How did we know? Paul said that he was a Pharisee and was a chief sinner. They are the chief sinner because their, their biggest sin was that they are not sinners. Beloved, Jesus is bigger than our mistakes. He associates with us. He eats with sinners. He qualifies the unqualified. You don't feel qualified. Sometimes you are playing with a woman. Women are... Even men, men, anytime you are going through pain and you are going through rejection, disqualification of any sort, you cannot imagine that which women go through that they don't express. They go through more, I'm telling you. Because you, the systems of this world, has expectations of you. We know we also hide some of our fears. But society has placed so much on us and there's so much that goes for us and goes against women. One of the things I don't understand in the world, in this, in this part of our world, is why they sell sanitary pad. Uh, like women are paying taxes. Women are, they are, they are because, because they are women. Uh, every man, they are punished for being a woman. And you own them home free. Own tears here. The thing that is causing them pain within that period too, they are using money to to collect. You, you, you may never understand what they go through. Hallelujah. My beloved, such people that are somehow in this world disadvantaged are the people that God came for. The reason why we can associate ourselves with Jesus. We also see from the story that God is a God of many chances. God is not a God of two chances. Second chance God. No. It's not a movement. Listen, it's not, it's not second chance. It's not a television station or a TV station. Listen, God, he's a God of many chances. He gives you people chances. All these people that God used, he never rebuked them once. He just gave them an opportunity. Opportunity after opportunity. Hallelujah. That's what they are. Listen, sometimes we make mistakes. We get into trouble by our own errors and omissions and commissions and we make mistakes. But their stories tell us that our mistakes and our sins can never be fatal or final. Jesus is still today in our lives, in the lives of Gentiles, the Alpha and Omega. He has a final word, woman. God has got a final word in your life. You don't qualify, yes. You don't know anybody, yes. But guess what? He has the final word. Your mistakes and your error and the label men have put on you is not the final chapter of your life. Hallelujah. We also see that God is a God of supernatural positioning. He can lift anybody from anywhere and put them anywhere that they don't deserve. Listen, how can you put, have you thought about it? Did you know that these women were in the genealogy of Jesus? Such a sacred place. Ten years from now, fifteen years from now, twenty years from now, you have no idea where your name will be. They're, 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 it's like they are calling, they are, they are naming football, good footballers. It's a Ronaldo, of course, he's on top. Yes. If you don't agree, you have to, you, it's, you, it's your problem. They say Ronaldo, Messi, Ozil. Then, then, then they are mentioned, then, then, then Richard Ofori. But God, God can lift Richard Ofori. And nobody has asked, who, who go and ask God about Tama? Why are you going to stand to ask God why is we up there? That's what Kofi Kenata said. That God that can continue. What you are doing, uh, you know what I come to say. When they finished their football, he said that the one that didn't wear t shirt just said he's the goal king. There's no VR. VR, there's no VR to check that statement. He has said, say, we are finished. Now. You scored hat trick. You are, you are, take, the, take the ball home. You scored three goals. You didn't see it. You didn't see the goals. It's your problem. I saw the goals. He's the goal king. 
or see naughty or naughty bench put him in a goal game. He's a man of the match. Who are you? Which court are you going to challenge this? Supreme Court. May you never go to a court in your lifetime. I said, may you never go to a court in your lifetime. I said, plenty for a defendant. If you go there, may you go there as a lawyer or as a judge in Jesus' name. You don't understand. Listen, God is a God of supernatural positioning. That is why, listen, the man that you marry, everybody will say you don't deserve the man. Uh, uh, who now deserve it? But when you uh, 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 they will say you don't deserve the job. But it is God who said that. <laughs> I'm giving you. Any rehab. You can go and hug the high tension. You have a problem that has no solution. You are hopeless. I said that I put her there. I see God raising women from this church and throwing them into parliament and throwing them into, 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 into places that matter, institutions that matter in this world to courtrooms as judges. You will not qualify. You don't have to qualify an adulterous Bathsheba. I read a lot of comments about these women. I, can't, I didn't come to preach about their lives, but I can do a series on each of them. A lot of people believe that Bathsheba, some people say that, or share the one that you know, you see what I'm you know, you know, yeah. Where is a woman like this? Beloved, but Jesus said that they are my people. They are my people. I came to cleanse people like this. Beloved, woman, are we here? All oh, the mothers say, give me a wave. Your woman, just give me a wave. In this part of our world, more me more boka kakra. But Christ mu, Bible mu, in the genealogy of Jesus, receive hope. By the grace of God, there's no woman like Rahab in this church. There's no woman like Bathsheba in this church. As for Tamade, he's far. You can't sleep with your father-in-law. Your, if your husband is not correct, you can't even cheat on him. Let alone your, your husband's father. I mean, can it come into your head? Why well, she is there? What makes you think that you cannot get there? I said, what makes you think that you cannot get there? What makes you think that you cannot get there? Because you think getting there is by what you do. It's by what you believe. The stories teach us a great lesson on the power of grace and repentance. And multiple chances that God can give us. Hallelujah. The last one is we learn from their stories that God is a specialist. He can fix broken lives. I know you have a phone repairer, you have a car mechanic. There are many people that fix many things in your lives. Uh, me, if I go home and I turn, I turn my TV on, it doesn't come on. I just go, I pick my phone, I'll type repairer. They will come, the last person will repair. I have a repairer. How many of you have a repairer? If your blender spoils, you have somebody that fix it for you. When your car breaks or when your car breaks down, you have a mechanic. Some of you also have uh, doctors. Eh? You have doctors that that you call. There's one, my doctor is here. By the grace of God, I'm not, I'm not calling her often. God is doctoring me. Yeah. But listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen to me. Sometimes things get broken down in our lives that we don't know who to call. We don't know who to fix. Hallelujah. Sometimes a pastor cannot even understand. But this God who put this hot life can be broken than a woman that has a cottage that hosts men 
And there is no man that are saying she's a prostitute. The Bible says that she was a prostitute. Broken lives, hopeless situations. Beloved, mothers, you have no idea the honor and glory that your children are bringing to you in the near future. Hallelujah. I said, mothers, you have no idea the honor, the places that you could not go by your education and by your marriage. Your children will take, you see, you, you, you go to White, White House, you go, you meet presidents that your strength and everything that you have acquired in life could not let you mean. But one son that God has given you and made all these sons, all these women, their mothers, and they all had children. And all their children were mistakes. Their children were mistakes. It is an error. We've been abandoned. Our real is a mistake. Our real is a favor. be a mistake. And our Quran is only a mistake. But the child that is a mistake, what children who are mistakes? I have a message on mistake children. Do you know one mistake child that has become a savior before? Now, yes, now, yes, then any mistake. Now, I'm a baffman for no one coming to be a bed. Now, you can hold no more. Yes, you are one of our rich and our own dream was I. Illegal entry. Illegal entry. And God came from down and came to put his word by force into a woman who believed. There was no intercourse. The original root was David, uh, was Joseph, right? Eh? And I don't believe. I'm telling you. Uncle Begu will be a warrior. Joseph said, Oh, John Cry. Where's John Cry? How can you be? Oh, I, 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 somebody has come to go ahead of me. Beloved, this, this woman's lives are loaded with lesson. This morning, if you're a woman, the Bible says that you are a weaker vessel. The message I brought to all the women today, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Mothers and women, potential mothers, husbands, likewise, Dwell with them with understanding. Yeah, understand that when they say don't call, call. But that's all I'm saying. Give honor to your wives who are mothers as to weaker vessels. Beloved, this thing intrigues me that God himself acknowledged that women are weak. Not weak in the sense that we think that they are weak. But beloved, if women are weak, weaker vessels, hey, watch here. You know, when you talk in the case of weaker, it means that they are first weak people before they are weaker. Men are weak. Women are weaker. God is strong. <laughs> weak, weaker, weakest. And I'm a boy. Then he said they are weak people. He said they are only weaker. Don't tell me when he said women are weak. It means that you are the strong. No, you are the level A. We are level B. Eh? He so men are weak. Women are only weaker. But guess what? The thing about weakness, God, he loves weakness. All these women were weak women that had questions and characters that need answers. But beloved, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. Me. Me. I have never desired to be a woman. The only reason I may want to be a woman is because of what I'm about to say today. Because of my, my obsession with grace. If women are weaker vessels, then they are God's automatic candidates for grace. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So if God's strength is made perfect in weakness... And men are not weak, we think, and women are weaker. It means that in whose life should there be more grace? Huh? As a grace, 
grace is for mothers. Grace, that is why they themselves are gracious. That's why they themselves are so gracious. They are so loving and they are so close in character to God than many men. Because grace, because of the weakness, because of the, the rejection, because of the pain, and because of all the lack and the weaknesses associated with being a woman, Emma, they draw a lot of grace from the Lord. All women and all mothers here, I pray that as we celebrate the grace of God, if you can admit, that is why you see women, you don't have to try to be strong. No, that women, uh, all men can do, women can do better. All this, you, you are running away from grace. God says his strength is perfected in weakness. And you are weak. That's why we take care of you. That's why we work and bring the money to you. That take and give us some. That is grace. All the men here, you don't do that. You don't do that. You're not like pastor. You are wise. Foolish pastor. You know. They are always receiving. You no, know, grace. The way God created women, they created them to receive. I can't explain that one. It's more blessed to receive than to give. You are the givers. They are receivers. And God, he likes receivers. The service is spoiling. I have to close it. In Jesus' name. But all the mothers here stand and let me tell you something. All the women here stand and let me tell you something. As I bring my sermon to a close, I want to look at me. Many of us, the truth of the matter, everybody, all my beautiful ladies in the house, look at pastor. Look at me. Listen. The thing about your life right now is that what is the stage that you are in right now is the stage that the people, these women were in in the Old Testament. A time and a day is coming where your name will appear in the genealogy of Jesus. When we are talking about women of faith and women that have accomplished great things for the Lord and in the Lord, your name will be, will be written there and you'll be celebrated. Sometimes, you see, when, they were, when the women were going through these things in the Old Testament, they didn't know, they didn't dream about it. That when they are talking about, they are listing people that Jesus associated with, they will be listed. They didn't know. That is how you also don't know today where your name will appear, where your children will take you, where that job and that marriage and that man will take you. I came to tell you that a time is coming that what you are going through, that man cannot understand and interpret. Your own Hebrew chapter 11 will be written. When they write Hebrew chapter 11, and they are writing about women, sit down. Young man, sit down. They will write another chapter of your life. Matthew chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 11. Yours has not yet been written. So you think that what you are going through is wasted. Their pain were not wasted. And your pain will not be wasted. Their lack were not wasted. Beloved, when men and women and your friends and family don't understand your cause, stick to it. Stick to faith. And I see a day where they will write about you and nobody will see like they wrote about Rahab in the book of Hebrews. And they were talking about she came there again representing all her three other sisters in the gen genealogy. And they were talking about Abraham and Jephthah and Samuel and Samson. They were talking about Enoch. And they're talking about these great people. When they're talking about great people, you don't expect the name of women in the first place. If there should be a woman, there should be a woman of virtue. There's no substance like Sarah and Deborah and Noah and Rebecca. But 
in the place where they were talking about men, they spoke about a woman who had scars, who had pain, who had cried, who had been rejected. Her name was written over there. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe. That is why I came here to, con to tell you to continue to believe. Continue to put faith in this Jesus. Some trust in horses and chariots. So women are cutting corners, giving themselves, sleeping with men, cutting corners, and doing all sorts of things to attain wealth, fame, and recognition. But all women of God, a woman of faith, a mother of glory, hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. I said, hold on. It's only a matter of time. A matter of time. When great men are being listed, not even great women, when great men are being listed, you'll be listed, you'll come with your scars and you'll show them that God is able to pick a nobody like a woman. There's no help. You don't have any help. You're an auntie, you're a mother, you're a grandmother, you're a single woman, you're a single mother. I came to tell you that this week is your week and this year is your year and this month is your month and this sermon is your sermon and there's hope for your future regardless of what has happened to you and what you're going through. I want you to walk towards me right now. Don't sit down, just walk towards me as I lay my hands on all of you. In the name of Jesus. It's Mother's Day. We have a lot of women in this church. We have a lot of mothers. Come, 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 come closer to Pastor. Come close to Pastor. And I want all the men to stand behind them or to stand where you are sitting. And I want you to stretch forth your hands towards them as, I, as we pray for them. God has made all of us here great mothers. But for some of us, the men that are supposed to come so that we become wives, then mothers, they are sleeping and their eyes are closed. By this prayer, our steps are going to be ordered. I'm going to lay my hands on you as your pastor and as your prophet. On this special day of our mother, if you're a mother, you are receiving more grace to be a mother. And to mother your husband who is a child and all your children. But much also to the women who are here who have wombs ready to carry babies but the men cannot be found. That we are going to command them to come and to wake up from their slumber in the name of Jesus. If there's any woman here and there's any wife here, there's any mother here whose child is going wayward and going astray in the name of Jesus, come close, come close, come close, so that I want everybody to be in front over here. In the name of Jesus. Can the men stand with me where you are standing? Stretch forth your hands as we pray for these mothers and these potential mothers. Lift up your voice and thank God for their lives. Lift up your voice and thank God for their lives. In the name of Jesus. Oh, let me hear men praying. Let me hear some baritone and some bass. From all over the place with outstretched hands. With loud voices. In the temple unto these beautiful damsels and women of God. These daughters of the Lord. These daughters of Zion. These women of faith. Without whom we will be nowhere. Everybody here was born by a woman. Everybody here was carried in a womb by a woman. When they walked out of the congregation, the church is finished. Look at the men. They are six. The lovers of God. The lovers of God. The makers and the keepers of the home. In the name of Jesus. Men give life, but we cannot keep a nature life. We give life and they nurture it. We give them sperm, they convert it. And make it into a baby. In the name of Jesus. Men, 
will you stretch forth your hands and from the depth of your heart begin to pray for this woman? Even the women and the mothers who are not here, in the name of Jesus. Women, will you receive, will you raise your hand and just receive these pronunciations, these blessings, and these prayers in the name of Jesus? La blue gade benda blanda po o shane me adaba aya. Le kende bla baba shabala pa aya. Wonderful angels that God has given to keep us, to nurture us. Without, when we were babies and when we were born, without the breast that God gave you, we wouldn't have survived in the name of Jesus. So, mothers here are CEOs. Today, you are going to be unveiled. Some of us here are business women. Some of us here are lawyers. Some of us here are prophets. Some of us here are apostles. Some of us here are pastors. Some of us here are mighty business and corporate executives. But pain and, 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 and neglect and, and misunderstanding from society has hindered the fulfillment of these great destinies. But this morning, the Lord is pouring grace upon you. I see the Lord pouring grace upon you. If you can cast all your pain, it's Mother's Day. What is Mother's Day without prayer? What is Mother's Day without impartation? What is Mother's Day without reward and without grace? Woman, will you leave it before the Lord? Will you, will you cast all your cares and all your anxieties before the Lord this morning? Will you lay it before the Lord in the name of Jesus? I speak into your life and I command those who are looking for babies, those who are looking for babies, receive babies in the name of Jesus. A year by now, during Mother's Day, your child will have been dedicated. You'll be holding your own child in the name of Jesus. I speak into your life as a prophet and I declare that the women here who are here to meet the men that the Lord has ordained for them, you will no longer be a missing rape. In the name of Jesus, I pray order. I rearrange your steps in the coming days. I rearrange and I bring new direction into your itinerary for the week and the month and the rest of the year. And I order the man to come to where you are walking. May you meet somewhere. May, may, may their eyes be open. May yours also be open to see the man with vision that you cannot see now around you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A year by now, if you're not married, you'll be in your husband's house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I release marriages. I release not just marriages, but beautiful marriages. Blissful marriages. Godly marriages. Godly men. And godly men. And I pray godly children into your wombs. In the name of Jesus. Any child that is going wayward. Any child that is sick. In the name of Jesus. As a woman of faith. When you stand and you lay hands on them. May the Lord hear and answer you speedily with miracles, signs and wonders. I pray the covering of the Lord over your head. And over anything that you are doing. I pray growth and speed and increase over your business. I bless you with the blessings of grace. That same grace that located Tamar, that made it, made it possible for Tamar and Rahab and Ruth and Bathsheba to be enlisted into a sacred list and a sacred place like the genealogy and the lineage of our Lord and Savior. Undeservedly, may you find yourself at a place in a job, in a marriage, with a baby, with a partner, that will be similar to their story that we will say that this is the doing of the Lord. It is graciously marvelous in our sight. In the name of Jesus, your womb is open. Your eyes are open. In the name of Jesus, you are special. You are anointed. I command any impossibility in your life, anything that looks like a mountain in your life, any impossibility. Yes, it was not possible for Rahab. It was not possible in the story of Ruth. But by faith, they access grace. And I pray in the name of Jesus 
that the Lord show you special mercy on this special day for women. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord turn your story around. Any deep desire in your heart that is yet to be fulfilled. Any deep struggle and challenge in your marriage that nobody knows about. The weaknesses, anything that is broken in your life. God, who is a specialist in fixing broken things. In the name of Jesus, may he fix you. May he fix you. May he finish every good work he has started in your life. In the name of Jesus, may grace abound towards you. If you are the weaker vessels, then you are candidates for grace. For where weakness abounds, there grace also abounds. As I walk amidst you, may the Lord walk amongst you. May the Lord walk amongst you in your families, in your marriages. In the name of Jesus, may you receive a touch from the Lord as I touch you. In the name of Jesus, every illness, every infirmity, every lack, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I pray supply. In the name of Jesus, I release grace into your life to accomplish more. In the name of Jesus, may you say, like Mary, be it unto me. Lord, this sounds impossible. It sounds impossible. I do not know a man. I do not know anybody. Mary said, but when God is on your side, when God is on your side, when God is on your side, the great warrior, the great deliverer of Israel, in the name of Jesus, may your word and your response be yes, be it unto me according to your word. May it be unto you according to his word. May it be unto you according to his word. May he reward your, your effort, not according to your strength, but according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. I stand in the midst of this woman and I raise my hand as a shepherd of this house. Any disease, any disease that afflict and affect women, any disease with a name, fibroid, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh God, what a gift you can give to your children on a special day that the world and the church has set apart to, to celebrate mothers than healing. Cyst. Any infections, diseases in the reproductive systems, in the name of Jesus, I command them to leave the bodies and the wombs of this woman in the name of Jesus. These are the temples of the Holy Ghost. They carry blessings and they carry healing. You are healed in Jesus' name. Woman of faith, go to the hospital this week and go and have another examination. For the Lord has so touched you right now. And you are healed in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. You are healed. Receive a touch of the Lord. I see the Lord taking away diseases. Diseases. Itchiness. Strange feelings in your body. Strange weaknesses in your body. Anything that looks like cancer. Anything that any, any, any fault and infirmity in the breast. Any form of Hey, any growth in the name of Jesus, anything the woman's body is complex and complicated than the man's. I speak correction. Wombs open. Men, come in. May the joy make, may the Lord make your joy full. Any woman here who is weeping and crying over a situation in the name of Jesus. Any woman who is weeping, I see some of us weeping. I see some of us secretly crying and dealing with issues. The Lord says, I should tell you. I see about five of us weeping and crying. Even this week you have in the name of Jesus. May the Lord wipe your tears 
and not only wipe your tears for if he does that he hasn't helped you much but may he put laughter in your mouth may he give you a new song may he turn your story around for when you are fixed the family will be fixed when you are fixed the men are fixed when you are fixed the home are fixed when you are fixed our children are safe in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you for your countless manifold blessings and grace upon this congregation and this beautiful woman. A year by now, may they all be here. May they bring their friends to this church. May none be offended. May none leave. Heal their hearts of offenses and keep them in this church for the next 50 years. May they grow old and become old. May they grow in this church. And may they raise their daughters and sons and their granddaughters and grandchildren in this house, in this church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. Oh, the men, keep clapping until they sit. Keep clapping until they sit. I tell you, you cannot be a woman for one day. You don't want to be a woman for a day. This amazing woman. Beautiful, beautiful woman. 